This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello, welcome to my bookbinding studio. I pulled out some of my favorite books today to talk about choosing the binding structure that's right for your book project. I'll mainly be discussing blank books like journals and sketchbooks, not books with content intended to be read, but there's still a lot in this video that will be relevant. To start off, some things you'll want to consider are how will the book be used? How many pages do you need? What type of paper do you need for the medium you'll be using? And how will the book be stored and transported? I'm going to take you through three categories of binding structures, single section, exposed sewing, and hardcover books. With the lowest page count, single section bindings include pamphlet stitch, perfect binding, and stab binding. These are simple, quick bindings that would be great for note-taking, sketching on the go, to-do lists, and self-published content like zines and photo books. You may have heard of saddle stitch, which is a term typically used by printers where they machine sew or staple booklets. All of these books use 24 pound text weight or 90 GSM writing paper. For pamphlet stitch, I like to use around 15 sheets for a 30 page notebook. Anything more than 50 pages would be unpleasant to use because it gets bulky at the spine and the pages don't turn as easily. I wanted to try making an extra thick pamphlet stitch book just to see how it goes. Um, this one has about 60 pages. So I can already tell that it's going to be tricky to punch holes through this thick stack. I'm going to punch three holes just for simplicity's sake, but um, something this thick would probably benefit from more sewing stations or more holes. Let's um, finish the book and see how it lays open. So I would probably press this with weights for an hour or so to flatten that, but I think it will bounce up um, every time I use it, which, which is fine. This is probably the thickest I would go. If you have loose sheets of paper to bind, try perfect binding or stab binding. These structures don't allow the book to lay flat or stay open on its own. So if that's not ideal, bind with folded signatures wherever possible. Before we move on to multi-signature books, I wanna thank our sponsor Squarespace. Websites are so important. It's the only place where you can have full control over presenting your online business. I knew that I needed a provider that makes it simple to start and easily make changes as my business grows and develops. I just did a website refresh to do a better job of describing who I am. Why is this always a painful task? I spent most of my time writing copy on a Google Doc, then plopped it into the pre-made layouts and adjusted the look to match the rest of my website. I also made changes to encourage visitors to take action by signing up for my newsletter, checking out my Patreon page, or purchasing something when my shop opens. If your goal for your website is to build your customer base and make sales, that means your website needs to be clear and functional, not amazing and perfect. Although it's definitely a bonus that Squarespace values beautiful design. You can try out Squarespace through my link, squarespace.com slash bittermelon, and when you're ready to launch, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. These are unique bindings that are highly customizable. They scream handmade. Keith Smith wrote a collection of books on these type of structures, which he calls non-adhesive bindings. The books offer a lot of different stitch and style variations. Coptic stitch is my go-to method for a book that needs to lay flat like a painting sketchbook or a recipe book. You can use heavier weight paper like watercolor paper since the spine is not bound with glue. 
I realized I made a lot of long stitch books when I pulled them all out and they are all very different. Long stitch is very versatile and there are so many different variations. I like to make scrapbooks and photo albums with this binding because I can adjust the space between the signatures to allow room for expansion as photos and ephemera are added to the pages. You can also make journals and sketchbooks. So these are two versions of photo albums that I've made. This is for four by six photos and these are for Instax square photos. These three are some of my top favorites because they feature a wraparound cover with unique materials. So this one uses leather made of pineapple. This one uses an iridescent vinyl and it's a little see-through. This one's made of wool and I finished the edges with a border. You may recognize this as the travel diary from Handmade Books at Home. These three are journals and sketchbooks with different stitching designs. So this one does lay open on its own um, when it's open near the middle of the book, but not that well when it's at the end or the beginning of the book. So you may need to use clips or weights to keep the pages down as you use it. This is 160 GSM mixed media paper. With exposed sewing bindings, the page count is up to you, but be aware of excessive spine swell, which means the increased thickness of the spine after sewing. So your book might look like a wedge shape. If you have too much spine swell, the spine might be wobbly or weak, and the binding might not be able to hold the weight of your pages. I have this Coptic stitch book here that is slightly wedge shaped. I can tell that the spine wants to lean one way, um, and so that's why I added a ribbon closure to um, keep the book together as much as possible, but it's um, with Coptic Stitch, it's a little more forgiving and I'm able to use it just fine. And then with this long stitch book, um, I intentionally made it the spine nice and thick so that when you add Instax films in here, um, the book will expand. Overall, I love exposed sewing bindings. It's what drew me to book binding and it's perfect for any creative artistic project. This is the classic book structure we know and love. There are two types, the flat back and the round back. The beginner friendly binding method is called case binding. Now I know it's not super beginner friendly and it, there is a learning curve to this, but it is the first step to learning more advanced hardcover bindings. Hardcover books are the sturdiest because the spines are well supported. So these structures are great for regular use and are long lasting. Use resilient cover materials like book cloth and Japanese papers. They're not ideal for binding stiff, heavyweight papers because the pages won't be able to drape open. I typically use 32 pound text weight, 120 GSM writing paper for all my case bound journals. For the flat backs, I make them with 80 pages. The round backs have 130 pages. Round back books simply allow for a higher page count and they're just beautiful and smooth. You can totally play around with the page count. Your goal is to minimize spine swell by rounding and create text blocks that are level from spine to fore edge. Case bindings are able to lay somewhat flat, but not as flat as Coptic books. I hope this was a helpful overview on choosing a binding structure for your bookbinding project. No structure is better than another, it all depends on your preference. This video was voted for by my patrons and is adapted from one of the weekly tips that I post on Patreon. 
So if you want access to all the weekly tips that I've posted since the beginning of 2023, you're invited to join the Practicing and Aspiring Binders tier. My goal there is to offer ideas and help you improve on your bookbinding skills. Also, thank you so much for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. It's thanks to you that I am able to live my dream as a working artist. I'm back with more consistent content this year, so make sure you turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any videos. Talk to you soon. Happy bookbinding!